this is your complete guide and test to the new modular Hero Me Gen 5 part cooling system. Upgrading the part cooling system on your 3D printer is generally a great mod for improving print quality. Best of all, it's typically great bang for your buck because you can print the duct for free and the fans only cost a couple of dollars. Previously, I've covered the Pets Fang, Bullseye and Hero Me, but this video is about something new, the Hero Me Gen 5 Master Suite. It supports pretty much every Creality 3D printer and clone, there's combinations for various printers and different types of fans and ducts, and all of the ducts have been tested with CFD. Being a relatively new project, one thing that is light is documentation, so hopefully this video can go some way into helping that. In this video, I'm going to guide you the whole way through the process, and then conduct a test, so you can see just how well it works. So here we have the Thingiverse page for the Hero Me Gen 5 Master Suite. This main thumbnail image tells you the appeal of this system. It's modular and compatible with a whole bunch of Creality 3D printers and clones. It supports seven different hot ends and six different ABL sensors. It also supports a variety of different part cooling fans in both single and dual configuration. And apparently with all these permutations, there's over 2 million possible combinations. Something else that's really nice are relationships with printermods.com and th3dstudio.com. Not only is this compatible with the modular direct drive kit that I'm running on my own Ender 3, but you can also order hardware kits with all of the required nuts and bolts from printermods.com. TH3D will be selling all of the printed parts and hardware kits. So with either of these options, if you're purchasing products, it'll make it very easy to transition to this system. Now there's quite a lot of documentation here, and that includes some recent updated files. And if we go to the file section, we'll see that there's many, many files. It can be easy to be overwhelmed. What I'd highly recommend doing is downloading all of the files as a zip, but not using this link built into Thingiverse. Instead, scrolling down to the bottom of the file section and downloading the included zip. Inside the zip, you'll find all of the same files, except now they're organized tidily into folders. All of this, of course, relates to the instructions, which are in PDF form. This is the same text as on Thingiverse, just a lot easier to read in this format. If you're watching this video and wondering if this fan duct is compatible with your printer, the list up the top here is probably the best place to start. In my case, I'm going to fit this system to the Ender 3 Pro, and it does have the MDD kit version 1.2. It's running my own remix of an earlier version of the Hero Me. It's also running an easier extruder with another custom adapter that I designed. Both of these won't be necessary due to the new options with this modular system. With my current setup, there's a little bit of wear and tear and the fan is a bit loose and rattly. But worst of all, I don't have proper strain relief in place for all of the wiring and that's just asking for trouble. The other printer I'll be fitting this to is the CR10S Pro. The stock part cooling fan duct failed on that during my review period. Since then, I've had a simple replacement part from Thingiverse. It cools from only one side, so we're going to upgrade to twin fans to see if it makes much difference. Before removing any parts, I printed my cooling fan torture test. And here are my before results. The bridging on the underside are both pretty reasonable and comparable. The overhang test is a little bit better on the CR10S Pro. It's pretty smooth on all four sides, up to around 70 degrees. The spires on top are also fairly comparable. They have their shape, but they're a little bit lumpy. With our baseline set, we can now start with the new kit. Before we start, we need to look at some prerequisites. There's some knowledge you need to have to select the correct parts. The printer model should be pretty straightforward for most people you'd hope. The hot end type can be a little bit trickier. On my Ender 3, I have a Micro Swiss replacement hot end, and the CR10S Pro has the stock hot end. This is the round one with two mounting bolts, and this is referred to as the V6 style in the documents. There are some notes here and I recommend you read them so you don't print the wrong parts. The next thing you need to know are how many and what size fans you're going to use with this upgrade. Here's a selection of the most common fans that you'll see on 3D printers and relevant to this upgrade. The first thing to understand is that the naming convention works on the exterior dimensions, this fan here being a 4010. This first fan is known as an axial fan Named so because the axis that the blades spin around is the same direction of airflow provided by the fan. 
The air moves away from the sticker side and generally these fans aren't suitable for park cooling. Instead, we use these radial or blower fans. With these, the rotational axis of the fan blades is not the same as the direction that the air exits from. This 4010 blower fan comes stock on an Ender 3 and other printers and it's not actually catered for by the Hero Me Gen 5. Instead, you either need to use a 5015 blower fan as shown here, or a 4020 blower fan as found on the CR10S Pro. In summary, only the right two fans here are compatible with the Hero Me Gen 5, so you're going to have to go shopping for them, and when you do, make sure you research your printer's voltage and select matching for the fans. Other things to make sure you have are the appropriate tools for creating plugs when you wire in the new fans. Before you start, it's also worth looking at the hardware required. This is an exhaustive list, and it states you probably won't need as much as this. I've built up a great collection of spares over the years, so I felt well prepared. If your printer has auto bed leveling, you'll need to know the type of sensor, and if you've converted to direct drive, the specific parts for you too. If you have ABL, you've already changed the firmware to implement it, but fitting this system will move the probe relative to the hot end, and you're likely going to have to update your firmware offsets. We're now up to selecting which parts to print, and we need to read carefully and select from the list for each section. The first part you need is the gantry adapter plate, and this is what interfaces with your printer to bolt the whole thing on. Now the same printers are listed multiple times, so it's important to read thoroughly, rather than stopping the first time you see your printer listed. For me, I have an Ender 3 Pro with a Micro Swiss hot end, but that's actually incorrect for me because I'm running the printermods.com direct drive kit. Instead, I need to come down and find that combination and then locate the two files, in my case, adapter 5A and gantry clip 5. I now come into the relevant folder and I can find the two parts that I need to print. The next piece is the base and this is the bulkiest part of the assembly. For my Ender 3, it was the top one, base one, but the CR10S Pro with the V6 style needed base five. The next section is only if you're running direct drive, and on my Ender 3, I have an EZR Struder with the printer mods kit version 1.2, therefore I needed Struder adapter one. Next up is our fan mounting and part cooling duct. And your type of printer and hot end are irrelevant here. You're only selecting this by whether you have 5015 or 4020 and whether you have one or two of them. The mounting and clearance is exactly the same for each of them. So just pick the ones you want based on the number and size of the fans you have. The penultimate section is for ABL mounts. And there's notes here that tell you whether to use medium, wide or narrow, depending on your fan ducts you previously selected. On the CR10S Pro, I needed the 18mm OEM mount, and if you have a BL touch, you need to pick one wing as well as one mount. Our final section is completely optional, and they're fan guards as well as LED mounts. We have all of our parts selected, so now we need to print them. There's guidelines in the instructions on the settings you should use. For instance, the adapter plates should be really high infill, but the rest can be a bit lower. Since both of my printers have silicon socks on the hot end, I elected to use PLA for everything. There's several hours worth of printing to produce all of the parts, but for the most part they are support free, and that's particularly nice on something as complex as the ducts. Soon you'll have all of your parts ready for post-processing. It's a nice idea to use a drill to clean up any of the holes, and the holes on the adapter plates are designed to not need support, but you still might need to clean them up a little. The aim is to have M3 hardware go in far enough to sit flush so the entire surface is flat. You might also have some obvious defects to cut away with the blade. We're aiming to have the airflow as smooth as possible. I didn't need much support material, but obviously you're going to remove that. And perhaps the fiddliest part is inserting the M3 nuts that go through the assembly that are gonna hold everything together. Most of them have a hex cutout and the location is obvious. However, there's four that are a little bit trickier at the rear of the base part. To fit these, I would place the nut in position and then use a temporary M3 bolt and get the thread started before putting something thin in and gently tightening it to pull the nut into its slot. For any nuts that weren't wedged, I applied a dab of super glue to hold them in place. You can now start to disassemble your hot end and this is gonna be different for every printer. Basically, just keep on removing fasteners until you're left with a bare plate. 
Both printers were straightforward apart from the CR10S Pro where I had to loosen the V-rollers to access the bolts behind the ABL sensor. The Ender 3 with the printer mods direct drive kit was really easy. With everything disassembled, now is the time to do any custom wiring if you're changing fans. The CR10 went from single to dual, so I wired in this simple wire junction using DuPont connectors. Now we start reassembly and each of the adapters use 4 m 3 by 8 mm bolts from the rear to hold the base on. Before you put these two together however, you need to mount your hot end so that it's dangling inside with the bolts already in place. This is by far the fiddliest part of the whole thing and it really helps if you put that dab of super glue around your nuts to stop them falling out. Hopefully this goes smoothly for you and before too long you'll have your adapter and your base connected. Now's a good time to double check your wiring to make sure it lines up with the supplied channel. There should be just enough clearance through the front of the base to get a tool in and to tighten the bolts that are securing the hot end to the rest of the assembly. Depending on your printer and base adapter, there's going to be additional fastness used to hold everything firmly in place. For my direct drive converted Ender 3, now is the appropriate time to install the EZR Struder adapter. Next, we're doing ABL mounts if you need them, and for the BL touch, the wing piece snaps into place and is held on by two M3 bolts. You can then mount the BL touch onto the mount that you printed before aligning the back of the mount with the slots on the wing and putting another fastening bolt in just loosely at this stage. For the CR10S Pro, I needed to remove the two grub screws from the factory mount and transfer them over to the printed mount for the Hero Me 5. This mount then bolts onto the base adapter, again with M3 hardware, and then finally we insert our probe from the top, again just leaving it dangling for now. The axial fan for the heatsink now bolts into place, again using M3 hardware, except this time they cut their own thread in the plastic base. Just be careful with the hole on the upper right, if you use a bolt that's too long, it can reach through and touch the wires for the hot end. If you're using one of the optional accessories over the top of the fan, you'd obviously put that on at this stage as well. For the direct drive Ender 3, I needed a slightly longer length of PTFE tube. This spans the small gap between the bottom of the EZR Struder and the top of the hot end. Now was a good time to install it before I bolted the EZR Struder to the printed adapter piece. With everything else now installed, we can finally take our printed fan duct and slide it up from the bottom. Each side uses two M3 bolts of varying lengths. We're going to put them in, but we don't want them tight yet because we still need to make final height adjustments. Your blower fan or fans can now be rested in place on top of the duct, and then you can use yet another M3 bolt with a nut, this time I recommend a lock nut, to hold everything in place. If you are wondering what the 4020 spacer is for, this is where it goes. We're on the home stretch now, and we can use cable ties for some cable management, on my Ender 3, that means finally having some strain relief, a big improvement. We can now set the final height of the duct by lowering the nozzle down until it's touching the bed, and then slide the duct up or down until it's between 1.4 to 1.8 millimeters. I printed a 1.5 millimeter box. It took the guesswork out of this job, and when you're done, you can finally tighten those retainers on each side of the duct. This height seemed pretty spot on to me, when I conducted a water test, there was a nice depression in the water just underneath the nozzle. If you're running auto bed leveling, you'll need to also set the correct height for your probe. Here I use a 4mm hex key to set the correct height for a BL Touch version 3.1, tightening the retainer up top. There's a good chance the probe offset has changed with this new system. The instructions will tell you the probe offsets depending on your combination. If you're using a recent version of Marlin, you can update this with M851 followed by an M500 to store the value in the EEPROM. If you're using an older version of Marlin, you're going to have to go back into the firmware source and update the values there. After this, recompile and upload the firmware to the printer. I had to do this for the CR10S Pro and I took the chance to trial out a new branch of firmware. This version works with the Creality touchscreen and adds extra features such as a G-code terminal and other useful things like PID tuning. This repo is linked in the description and so far it's working great for me. Because the adapter plates for this system push the hot end out a few millimeters, you might find that your nozzle is no longer in the correct spot after homing. If you can't fix this by simply repositioning the end stop, there are detailed instructions to tell you what to update with G-code. 
if you are running auto bed leveling, you're going to have to recalibrate your Z offset on the first print. This can generally be done from the LCD or touchscreen, and don't forget to save the value with an M500 so it stays for next time. Our installation is completely finished, so there's nothing left to do but to print a follow up. On the Ender 3, the underside was definitely a little bit tidier, as were the overhangs on all four sides. My previous setup was already better than stock, and this is a little bit better once again. On top, the skinny spires showed little to no change. The CR10S Pro was going from single to dual fans. The results, however, were a lot closer with the before and after. I think it's a tiny bit tidier on the underside, and on the underside of each of the four towers, it's perhaps a little bit better again, but not so obvious as it was for the Ender 3. Like the Ender 3, the spires look near identical. Overall, I really appreciate the time and thought that's gone into this, and the flexibility it gives in upgrading the part cooling on many Creality and Clone 3D printers. This is a system I thought was going to be really fiddly, but after I'd put it together, it all made sense and it was much more simple than I expected. What I've learnt from my testing is that the upgrade from a small 4010 blower up to a larger blower fan is quite significant. So if you've got a printer like an Ender 3 or Ender 5 that comes with one of these fans, this is a great system for making that upgrade. Most of all, I'm just really thankful of the time and effort that's gone into this, released free to the community to give all of us more options when upgrading our 3D printer. If you're going to try this out or you already have, please let me know how it went down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.